Hi, Mike Rizzuto here again from Mastermind Incorporated. Welcome back to the MastermindInc.net uh, YouTube channel where the 57 through 60 Cadillac is the star of the show. We offer a wide range of high quality products for 57 through 60 Cadillacs of all types, but our main specialty is the Eldorado Brome and other Eldorado series cars. Today we're going to continue our discussion of the refinishing of the 57, 58 Eldorado Brome stainless steel roof. Um, Here's an example of the unrestored roof we featured in the previous debut video. Um, you will notice that, uh, well, we've cleaned it and uh, we'll look at it for closer inspection. And I had already seen most of these problems, but you know, it's very difficult to show it to you um, until it's clean. So first, the biggest one, of, well, ordinarily this would be a big problem, but on this car, this is the, this is the smallest big problem we've got. Uh, there's a lot of major, really hard to fix things on this car, um, unfortunately. Most of them aren't this bad. And this one doesn't even look that bad, but it's got some serious issues. Um, you'll notice this dent right here. If it wasn't where it is, it wouldn't be a big problem. But because of this, there's a reinforcement rib underneath the uh, roof, it's directly over it. And we can't get behind it, so that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, that we're going to have to figure out some solution to that uh, currently we do not have a solution to, but I will make one. Um, <clears throat> over here, we're going to start talking about. We've got. Well, let's come over here. Let's come over here, son, uh, and we'll we'll do this. Uh, we'll do these creases. I'll show you the creases for start. If you've got major problem here, this is the scariest part of this whole thing. We've got a crease. You need to crouch down and move the camera back and forth. We've got creases like right here. You've got a. You know, we could probably show it better from the other side, but we've got a. Uh, I got gotcha. you. We've got. You got to get the get on the other side and get it. You know, you can see there's a sixteenth of an inch depth crease at the front of this thing. And I'll try to try to explain this a little bit better. Here. But it looks as if, it's almost as if there was a, like a garage door or something came down on it long ways instead of like, ordinarily a garage door might come down on it this way. But that's what this looks like, like something came, like guillotine came down on it. And if you put this straight edge here, you can see there's, a, there's about a sixteenth of an inch low spot in the center. And it's low like two to two, almost three inches across. It's low. And you got a big air gap there. You see the light through it? Can you see the light? Yeah, okay. What we have is we have about an eight inch section like that, which wouldn't be too bad, uh, except part of it is underneath the windshield bracing over here. So that makes it very difficult. But that isn't even the, the most difficult part of it. The biggest problem we have here is, uh, well, let's, let's, since you're over here, let's talk about this, this uh, hammer stuff here. This isn't the biggest problem, although again, this is a major problem. I wish it were. Uh, I wish it weren't. Probably have to sit up here to get this picture. Can you see all those hammer marks? Oh, here. Yeah, we're doing all these hammer marks. Somebody has been helping me. You can't see it from that angle. You have to. There's a whole bunch of hammer marks here. Can you see that? Move the camera back and forth until you can see that. And that's all high there. It's way high. It's stretched, and it's been hammered. About a good 24 inches of, of the roof has been hammered, and they stopped right here where the, where the reinforcement rib is, and now it's high here and low here. So that in and of itself is a major fiasco. Um, but that's not even the worst of it, <laughs> if you can imagine that. Um, the worst of it, you know, um, yeah, we, you know, it's like, like I always tell people, it's cheaper if you don't help. Um, I don't know who did this, but, uh, this is, this could take a great amount of time to fix because it's all stretched, you know, and, uh, you need to get it from this angle here. Let me just get in here, hold the camera, get in here and move that way. can see it good now, right? Okay, so that's, that's a major fiasco in and of itself. Um, 
and I'm a little concerned about that. Um, uh, now, the worst thing is you're going to have to get down over there here. There they are. You see them? No, I see them good. Yeah, okay. And uh, the worst of it is going to have to be shown on this side, on the right side of the car, so we can catch the light. And what we have here is a situation we have about an eight, like an eight inch section from the front to about here where it's creased pretty deeply and it's about a sixteenth of an inch low so it's, it's low from like three inches wide and then from about here to here like about a four or five inch section, maybe six inches, five, six inches section, it's relatively straight. But from here all the way down about 34 inches, 34 or 36 inches, it's creased like it is up here. Okay? And you, you can see this if you, if you put your camera down low and keep moving it back and forth. It's got a big low spot right here. I mean, a gigantic low spot. You know? And uh, this is, it, it, there, there is no harder spot on this roof to fix than that. And the problem is, you know, I, uh, it looks like, like some kind of thing came down like a guillotine or something and bam, bam, and, and creased it, you know? Um, Let's see it from the this, bottom. This has the potential to become like a major nightmare. Uh, the flat section is like, you know, it's hard because it tends to oil can. Yeah, and you can actually see this crease from underneath here. If you look right here, we were wondering what this was. We never had anybody paint the inside of one of these roofs before. And, but you'll notice, see this crease? It starts like right about here and then continues all the way to right about here and then it's like about five or six inches where it's not creased and then it continues on to the to the windshield can you see that on the camera yeah so uh, yeah this is the this has the potential uh, you know it's going to be like trying to straighten a barn door I mean, it's going to be very very hard to fix that um, uh, you know I, I don't scare easily when it comes to this because I'm fairly skilled at this uh, but um, this one really frightens me, I have to say. <laughs> this metal is very tricky to work with. It's extremely hard to deal with and straighten. And it's hard to, because it doesn't react like, like the fender of a car or something like very springy. And it's nothing like straightening a fender, you know. And you've got to be careful. And there are places I'm going to have to use a torch on it. Uh, that is going to be really, really scary. This metal is only about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And that's why this is such a very high risk work what I'm doing here because I can't obviously screw up this job um, and the reason I'm scared of this is because I once had a guy bring a car to me that uh, had a perfect roof on it except it had one little dent and he had his body shop guy bang out the dent and then he put a big hump in the middle of the roof right right about here it took me weeks and weeks and weeks to fix it I mean it was a nightmare of all time I had many sleepless nights I was sweating bullets and lost a lot of sleep over this thing because I was really concerned that I was going to sand and file through this guy's roof because it's only about a sixteenth of an inch thick and then you've got this big old thing oil canning on you in the metal. It's really kind of scary and this is not a sheet of the roof. I mean this is the actual roof. This is not a, you know a decorative cover over the roof. Like a lot of people think that's what this is. This is the roof. And uh, so this is not something you can screw up. Um, then, then we also have another tricky problem. There are no easy problems on this roof, uh, other than the usual scratches. I mean, none of it's easy, but the usual scratches are, uh, yeah, you'll have to get up here and kind of get down this way, and I'll try to point it out. I mean, the scratches, yeah, this is time consuming to get out. All these big scratches and all these scratches going the long ways across the grain and everything and all these little scratches everywhere. All takes a lot of time. But it's not as, you know, it's not frightening like working on the middle of the crease in the middle of the roof like that. Here, we've got a situation where where they welded this, 
they did a terrible job on it at the factory and it's all wavy and it's kind of it's hard to see it from this angle but if you shoot from the top down you can see it you, know, you get the light on it right i mean you have to get the light on it right this thing's got big low spots like right here you know can you see that yeah and uh the fixtures are not going to work like that you know so um so i'm going to have to try and again it's hard to get behind because this this piece was one big piece and then these pieces were added you know and so we got hammer welds and stuff behind here and so this is going to be hard to do um then of course you know the usual factory imperfections and things uh this is an early number car so here you can see it if you stand right here you can see this big whoopee right here see this i mean that's going to have to stay because that's been all spot welded in place and the molding sort of covers it so it's not that bad but uh but up here this big old low spot like right here is going to be got to come out um you know a lot of stuff like this is typical of early number cars uh i found lots of early number cars where things don't fit right and uh i had I forget what number it was like body number 70 one time where the fender didn't match up to the door so they welded a big quarter inch strip of metal on the edge of the fenders and let it over it to fit it and you know so the earlier the number the weirder the car and this is number 121 so <laughs> it's a pretty early car um you know we typically know how long it takes to restore one of these roofs so we charge a flat fee as a general rule it's usually the usual stuff this is not the usual stuff these creases and the really hard to get at stuff is this is a whole different ball game here than what we usually get involved in unfortunately um and uh, of course you know when people try to help us um like this this area here where all the hammer marks are and stuff doesn't look that bad and it looks relatively straight but it's not straight and you can feel a big hump if you burn your hand over it right here it actually if you look at it this way it looks reasonably straight except for where it's low underneath where the roof rib is but if you go like this you can feel a big hump in it and i got a, I mean that's a nightmare right there all by itself never mind the crease in the middle of the roof um so um Anyway, uh, so, you know, as a general rule, you know, we have a flat fee, but, you know, I tell people, if, you know, we've got really serious issues, um, most of them don't. I mean, this is very unusual to have, especially has so many really serious issues. Um, because, of, you know, relatively clean car, uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's been around and things have happened to it, apparently, so. Uh, so if we live through the process, uh, we'll make another video in, uh, <laughs> in a couple of months <laughs> and show you the finished product, which uh, I'm confident that we can get it. It's just going to, uh, this part's scaring me, but, you know, I'll get, uh, I'm going to lose a little sleep over this one, I can see. So, but we're going to give it a shot. I think I can uh, manage to make it happen. So thanks for watching, and we'll be updating you.